Yeah, I, I uh, was in Umiat uh, and a little bit of kind of not forgotten history because there were only six people president, uh, present when the first oil was drilled and uh, flowed freely from a well. Uh, the first hole, I was a driller as a young, just a kid almost, uh, in Umiat. And before that occurred, uh, I had to go into camp on June the 25th, 1950, and pick up a part for the drill rig. And the camp foreman came out of his closet, and he was yelling and waving his arms, and he said, Bud, he said, we're at war. And I said, Frank, his name was Frank Spinning, and I said, Frank, I said, uh, when I left this morning, everything was fine. I said, what's going on? He said, no, he said, really? He said, we're at war. I just got a radio message from Point Barrow, uh, someplace called Korea. And so I said, you know, this is 1950 now. And I said, they'll never find me in this godforsaken place. And two weeks later, I got my first draft notice that I was classified 1A and to expect uh, to report for physical and all these kind of things. And, uh, out of about 22 of us that were inducted from where I came from, uh, uh, every one of them went to Korea, except me, and I was the only one that didn't. And part of that was because uh, of my Arctic experience. They, they, had, they did a, 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 a operation in Alaska, of all places, and I'm stationed down somewhere in Southern California at the time. And they found out on my record that I was from Alaska, so they threw me in the the commander of the operations jeep as his radio man and the lead jeep because I'd had Arctic experience and I can advise him on cold weather and things like this. So they, we came up during the winter uh, of the 52. And then when I got back, I volunteered to go to Korea, but I didn't have enough time. <clears throat> and once again, they said, well, we would like you to stay in and if you want to really go to Korea, why well, just sign here and hurry up for three more years and we'll send you over. And so I said, no thanks. <laughs> it was my mother notified me that a couple of the guys had gone in with me. Uh, one was just raised with me as if we were more like brothers than anything. was killed. He, he had volunteered actually to go in the first Marines uh, in Korea and uh, he was killed. Uh, and another that went in with in our group killed who I knew it wasn't we were friends but not like Jerry was. Well when you're in the military and we were all expecting to go even though I didn't, uh, you know that hits you pretty hard because you kinda wanted to be there too and yet you know you have these feelings of loss. And I remember those things very clearly. 